Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Well, good afternoon and welcome to Postscript. My name is Tyler Riley, high school pastor. I'm here with Adam McIntyre, Grow Group Coordinator, who just gave an incredible message so. uh, wrapping up our Jonah series. Um, and so Adam, we do have a couple of questions. If we can just jump right into it. Absolutely. Uh, so the first question is this. Uh, you talked about where scripture references bearing your cross. Mm -hmm. um, obviously we don't have crosses today. So what right. exactly does that mean to bear your cross today? Right, well, uh, like I said, I kind of went through the first step, I think, of, of bearing your cross, which is allowing God to humble you um, and just breaking down um, your, you know, any preconceived notions that you had, uh, your previous worldviews, your, your own version of right or wrong, and then allowing Scripture and the Holy Spirit to begin to form in you um, like a new way of seeing the world, um, new perspectives, new uh, sense of right and wrong, um, and what is just and what's unjust. Um, and I think that also involves repentance, right? You saw the people of Nineveh repent, and I think in order to do that, we have to turn away, again, from our old ways of living, our old ways of acting, um, in order to embrace uh, God's call. Um, and beyond that, then it's this slow process of dying to yourself, which I think is a continual thing. It's something that you're going to be doing uh, for the rest of your life. Like, none of us ever learn to carry our cross perfectly, mm. right? Um, and so every day, it's picking something else out that you know, I'm not obedient in this way, or I have anger towards this person, I have hatred towards this person, um, and I need to die to that and allow God to, to create something new in me. And um, it's almost like you can, you can take the fruit of the Spirit and uh, think, okay, like, what practical steps can I take to help grow this fruit in my life, mm -hmm. right? Like, if I'm struggling with patience, then what is a practical thing that I can do uh, to actually work to grow patience. And so doing those little bit things every day, you're, you're killing off your old way of living and thinking, um, and you're allowing God and you're allowing the Holy Spirit to transform you and to, and to build you into something new. And I don't think it necessarily means that you um, are going to die um, like as a martyr. Maybe. I, God absolutely calls uh, some Christians to, um, to die uh, for the sake of the kingdom. Um, but what I do think it means for all Christians is that we do need to kill off our old selves. That, I mean, that's part of what baptism is, right? Um, yep. We're buried with Christ's death, and when we're raised, we are a brand new person. Um, and so, again, practically speaking, it's hard to lay out. You do A plus B plus C, and then that equals carrying your cross. Uh, but I think it's just that gradual process of learning to uh, die to yourself and uh, be obedient to the commands of Jesus. Right, which as you said is a daily thing. It's Absolutely. a daily decision right. on the skin. Uh, you also referenced the people of Nineveh, which kind of segues perfectly into our next question, which is, uh, so God um, showed grace to Nineveh and the people of Nineveh heard, you know, he they heard Jonah's call right. and then they were repentant. Um, but what about those who hear that call and their hearts are still hardened um, or they aren't repentant? What about those? Uh, that's a great question. And I don't know if my answer is going to be very satisfying uh, because I think that a lot of Christians will try to speculate on uh, whether or not a person uh, truly repent, repented and um, received God's grace and, you know, and received Jesus and, and is going to be saved or if they didn't repent and, uh, and then what's going to happen to them. And, and we tend to speculate about that, that a lot when in reality, it, I mean, if we really look at the message and the theme of the Jonah story, it's that God's grace is far more expansive than we could possibly fathom. And we can't begin to even start guessing um, who's in and who's out, right? And I know we like to think of that way a lot of times because we like things to be black and white. Um, and, and I'll also say there is a clear uh, theme in scripture too that we absolutely do need to repent. Mm. And we absolutely do need to turn away from uh, evil and sin um, that has infected our life before. Uh, that's definitely a part of it. And without repenting, um, then we are absolutely rejecting God's grace, right? Um, you, you, can't, you can't accept it without repenting. Um, but at the same time, uh, I don't know if we can speculate about what God is doing with his grace, basically. Right. Like who he's giving it to, who, like it's just, uh, we don't know. Um, and so I tend to kind of go towards, there's a, a theologian named Karl Barth 
um, who said, I don't know um, if everyone's going to be saved, uh, but I think it's the job of every Christian to hope that everyone right. is. And I think that's, that's one of the messages of, of Jonah is that we need to adopt that way of thinking and allow God to grow that kind of heart in us where we're not sure who's going to receive his grace, but we really hope it's everyone. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, that's all we got. Thanks so right. much for being here, Adam. Um, and thanks again for the message today. And thank you for being here. And we'll see you next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.